as implantologists, we need to reliably predict the probability of success of an immediate implant placement. Does that sound crazy? Well, things are only impossible until they're not. In today's video, I'm going to show you a simple method for doing just that. It's called the five thread rule. Let's look at a scenario. Mrs. Smith comes into the office and presents like this on her radiograph. Just by looking at the image, we know with confidence that we could place an implant in the four and five position. But what about the three position? Not so straightforward, is it? We can see the tooth is embedded in bone, but we can't clearly determine the amount and quality of bone on tooth number three before the tooth is removed. The last thing we want to do is say, Mrs. Smith, I'm going to take out your tooth and give you an implant in the same appointment, and then fail. What do you think Mrs. Smith is going to think if you take out the tooth and realize there's no bone, and then can't place the implant? I guarantee Mrs. Smith won't give you a five-star Google review. So how do we look at the radiograph and say, Mrs. Smith, I know with a high level of certainty that I can take out your tooth and place an implant in the same appointment. We want a rule that lets us consistently and reliably predict whether an immediate implant will be successful. So how do we do it? For primary stability, plan for a minimum of five threads to engage native bone. This is the five thread rule. I'll say it again. For primary stability, plan for a minimum of five threads to engage in native bone. Now, where does this rule come from? It comes from physics and engineering. More specifically, it's from the same principles as a load on a bolt. When you're using a threaded implant, the forces on that implant act in the same manner as they do on a standard hardware store bolt. So let's take a look at one. When we look at a nut on a bolt, we notice that there's a square pattern to the nut. If you take this square and slide it over, you can count the number of threads that fit beneath it. One, two, three, four, five. Huh. There are five threads on the nut. I wonder why. Maybe the engineers knew something. They knew that if you have threads on a bolt, the first thread carries 34% of the load. The second thread carries 23% of the load. And as you go to the fifth thread, you carry a total of 93% of the entire load on five threads. So we know that the first thread on a bolt, the one closest to the force, carries the highest percentage of a load from that applied force. From the literature, we also know that the crustal bone carries a significantly higher portion of the load than the deeper bone. We know this to be true from photoelastic studies and from finite element analysis. Now, as we've established, we need to get at least five threads into the bone for primary stability. When you have an implant like this one, the pitch, which is the number of threads per unit length, is about one thread per millimeter. So if you want to estimate the length of the implant, you can simply count the threads and discover that it's about 10 and a half millimeters long. The problem is this. This one is also 10 and a half millimeter implant, but how many threads are there over here? One, two, three, four, five. There are only five threads on the entire implant. For this one to engage bone, the entire 10 and a half millimeter implant has to be embedded in bone. This would not be a good implant to choose if you wanted to go into a fresh extraction socket. If you do, the bottom of the implant will engage in bone, but at the top, it will just float in space. There's no way I could use this for an immediate placement after an extraction. It's just not a good implant design. This one, on the other hand, was well designed. Imagine I've done my extraction and I'm about to place this implant in the hole. The five threads that are going to engage will be the apical portion of the implant, these five here. If I can get just these five threads at the bottom to engage in bone, the likelihood of primary stability is very high. Now, what if there is an apical radiolucency, a hole down here, and the five threads that are engaging are in the middle of the implant? Doesn't matter. It's still gonna work. The implant is stupid. The bone doesn't care. The implant doesn't care. It just needs any five threads. Now let's go back to our dilemma with Mrs. Smith. 
How do we know in advance if this is going to work? Since we know the size of the implant and the distance between the threads, we can use our digital workup to determine ahead of time whether it will be possible to embed those five threads. Let's go to our 3D data. The green is bone, and the gold represents Mrs. Smith's teeth. I have an implant planned here, but you cannot see it. It's currently hidden inside the bone inside the teeth. Since insufficient facts always invite danger, we need to know more. So what can we do? What if we could take away the bone and just look at the teeth? Boom. If I can see this green implant, it's because it's in the radicular space. It's not in the socket. When I take this tooth out, that tooth is gone and the gold we see here becomes the empty socket. Since we can see that the implant doesn't occupy the gold space, we know for sure the implant is not in the socket. There are five threads over here. There are five threads on this side. This is a slam dunk. Now we see the power of the five thread rule with our 3D model. We can say, Mrs. Smith, I have a high level of certainty that I can take out your tooth, place an implant, graft around it, all in one appointment. What does Mrs. Smith say? That's amazing. The person I went to before said, I'd have to have my tooth taken out, graft it, wait three months, then place the implant with a second surgery, and I hate shots, wait another three months, and then restore it. So I was looking at like six months before I could get my tooth in, and now you're telling me I can get it in three? In half the time? I'm signing up with you. But you have to know you're going to be successful before you start. This is how you do it. Watch this. Is this green implant floating in space? Nope, it's in the bone. Slam dunk. But what happens if there are gaps that prevent your implant threads from making contact all the way around its circumference? Let's look at this graphic of an implant going into the socket of an anterior tooth. If we have these base threads all the way in bone, but these threads are only partially in bone, this implant is still going to work. Why? Let's talk about grilling. We've all cooked on the grill, and when you're grilling a hot dog, what do you use to pick them up and turn them? Tongs. And tongs have two points of contact. So just like a hot dog, we need to hold an implant with a minimum of two areas of contact. We don't have to have circumferential coverage. Instead, we use what's called bisocket stabilization. As long as we follow the five thread rule, two areas of contact on either side of the implant will support it. Let's look at some examples. This one, a premolar. These two areas provide your stability. As long as you have five threads engaging here and five threads engaging here, even though the gaps are here and here, it will work. What do we do in the gaps? We graft so they don't collapse. What about a two-rooted tooth? Works there too. The buccal and palatal bone both engage. That's bisocket stabilization. What about three? What about first molar upper? Even better, here we have tri-socket stabilization. Set the implant, graft the gaps, and you're good to go. Keep in mind, the only way to keep this implant exactly in this position is to use a surgical guide, which you should always be using anyways. Otherwise, the implant falls into whichever hole it wants to, and you're just left with a, oh shoot, I guess it's good enough, implant. When I'm doing bi or tri socket stabilization, I'm often asked if I undersize the implant. In the past, when I used BioHorizons Plus implants in soft bone, I would. With BioHorizons Pro, which I use now, I don't undersize the osteotomy. The thread pattern is more aggressive and is too good to undersize. You'll torque out before you're fully seated in the bone. So let's look at some case examples. This is a scan from Sedexa showing the upper teeth with the bone removed. Take a look at the orange implant here. Is it in the root? Since it's not in the root, what does that tell us? It's in the bone. Slam dunk. An anterior example, this one on three shape. I'm going to take out this blunted tooth. Do I have five threads up here on my implant? Yep, slam dunk. How about this case? Let's count. 
I have four threads up here, but I also have all of these in the bone. Slam dunk. See how simple it is to use the five thread rule? It gets even better. Here we are with an in-sequence full mouth case. Let's look at the implant here. Is it in the radicular space between the roots? Do I have five threads on the buckle? Yes. When they rotate this model around for me, I have five threads on the lingual as well. Slam dunk. How about this implant? All of this at the bottom will engage bone, but this up here won't. What might we do at the time of surgery if there's a gaping hole here? Autograph it. The bone that we can reduce here goes there. If you have an implant plan that places implants where they have teeth, all you have to do is use the five thread rule. Count the threads using your 3D model and you'll all but be guaranteed primary stability. It's that simple. Remember, for primary stability of an implant, you need to have a minimum of five threads embedded in bone. The threads do not have to have circumferential coverage, but you need at least bisocket stabilization for it to work. And make sure you use your surgical guide and graph the gaps. Suddenly, you'll be able to place implants where others won't. You'll be able to boldly go where no man has gone before. If you like this video and want to learn more about the cutting edges of dental implantology, just subscribe to the channel or check us out at stanleyinstitute.com. This has been another episode of Implants Made Simple. Smile Engineer, out.